Morning everybody, how's it going? It's the Tin Man here, just checking out the old burn pile. We had an absolute roaring fire going here yesterday, just cleaning up. This is kind of a, I dug a, I dug a hole in the yard with my skid steer and uh, been cleaning up this yard slowly over many, many years. Uh, this yard was completely overgrown. Anyhow. How's it going? It's uh, 7.30. I work outside, so I don't uh, wear a watch. I just, uh, I use the sun as my clock. Problem is this time of the year in the northern hemisphere, uh, it's going to get to the point here where the sun's not up till 8.30 and it goes down at 4.30. So it's, uh, it's three, two degrees Celsius. So I don't know. What is that? Mid thirties, just above freezing. And, uh, it's cold out this morning. It's the way she goes here. That's why I wear a big beard. Uh, it's not a fashion statement. I work outside this winter. I'll, uh, I'll shoot videos where I can this winter of me at work. And you'll see this will just be full of ice and it's a uh, protective coating. I do need a haircut though. That's uh, that's getting out of hand, but uh, I think we're going to go to the shop this morning. You guys have been emailing me about porting, porting theory more or less. Um, I think it's warranted. Let's go inside the shop. I got to make a quick fire, heat the shop up. Let's talk about porting theory as I look at it. Uh, and then coming up very soon, I'm going to drop a cutaway of the porting theory. I want to talk about it on the bench, have a good open conversation about porting, and then we're going to do a cutaway video of porting theory. I want to talk about blowdown, compression, all that stuff. But I think we need to go to the bench and talk about it first, and then we'll move forward from there. I want everybody to learn. This is a channel of learning. I learned. I wasn't born doing this. I learned and I want you guys to learn. So let's go in the shop and, uh, and make this happen. I'm not going to walk over to the shop because whew, lighting's not the best. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back in the shop. Just want to uh, put my axe away. I was splitting wood with it yesterday. And... Uh, this is what I do. You guys have seen this on my channel before. Those of you that, those of you that have been around, it's my fucking special. Three and a half pound Kelly Works double, true temper. I uh, I use linseed oil and I just give her a good rub down. And uh, from other hobbies that involve wood and steel. Uh, I learned this a long time ago. Uh, if you oil the wood down, it keeps the pores uh, swollen. If you let the wood dry out, it'll actually, the pores retract and uh, it'll shrink. So it, it's my thought that if you keep, if you keep it nice and oiled, especially on the end grain, it'll stay swollen and it should stay tight. Again, haven't had any problems with this. Fucking makes a mean saw. Or mean saw, mean axe. Got saws on the braid, folks. Just wanted to oil this up before I put it away. Just linseed oil. I'm gonna hang this up on the wall here. Okay, I got my axe put away. Just wanna just grab two random saws. Okay? Give me any two saws. Just grab two saws because that's Whatever, right? I want to talk about these two saws and I want to talk about porting, porting theory. I get I get emails every week and I love it. And a lot of them I go, geez, I don't know. Or how can I explain that in words? I think most of us are visual learners. So being on YouTube, it's visual, right? So how, how do I pick my numbers? How do I decide what a saw needs? 
all that kind of stuff. I get these questions all the time. Can you port without a timing wheel? I don't have a timing wheel, Tin Man. Can I port my saw? So let's start with the first thing. I don't have a timing wheel. Can I port my saw? This is my opinion, and you know what they say about opinions, folks. My opinion is no more valid than anybody else's. My opinion is valid to me because I've said it before. Everything I speak about on this channel is something I've personally experienced. It's not something I read. It's not something I saw on the internet or another builder did. Um, it's something I've personally done. I have ported without a timing wheel. I ported three saws before I started using a timing wheel. And this is before I had a channel. Um, two of them ran okay. One of them ran me. Like it was, it was peaky. It tended to lean out. Um, wasn't very good. The first two ran good, but they weren't like, they weren't hard chargers. So in my experience, I can't port without a timing wheel. There are guys that do. Um, I'm okay with that. There are a few porters that I know of that, that don't use a timing wheel. And their saws, you know, a lot of them run very well. I haven't seen all their saws, but, um, can you port without a timing wheel? I can't. And here is why. Deck heights, okay. Let's, let's grab the cutaway again. This is your deck, okay. This is your deck. Deck heights vary between manufacturing runs, okay? The deck is the bottom where the cylinder mates, okay? And this, is just, this just goes back to basic manufacturing. Anybody that does manufacturing or machine work understands things like this. Different runs are going to have different deck heights. Um, in my line of work, I'm in the sheet metal game. When the factory about... You know, I'm going to say once a year, once every six months, the factory I get my sheet metal from, they will shut down and retool, shut the line down or, or whatever, right? And they'll, they'll make little tweaks and adjustments. The fittings I get after that, they're slightly different than the ones I had before, but they will often be consistent for the next six months. Okay. It's going to be the same thing with saws. So first things first. I can't port without a timing wheel because deck heights are very, and you say, Tin Man, well, what does that all mean? Here, let's grab 281 cylinder. Remember, the height of all the ports, your intake height, your transfers, and your exhaust port are going to change timing wise based on where the cylinder sits on your deck, right? Does that make sense? The crankshaft is in a stationary position or a standard position. That's everything is based off the crankshaft. So if you have one with a higher deck, you will have a higher exhaust roof. That saw will pull more RPM. It will also have less compression generally. Okay. If it has a lower deck height and a lower exhaust roof, that saw will run slower RPM and have more compression. Okay. Now, so if you have two saws, if I had two 365 specials and one has a low deck height and one has a high deck height, what they need timing wise will be different. The one with the lower exhaust, I'll probably have to raise the exhaust roof higher. The one with the higher exhaust roof might not meet, need as much grinding on the exhaust port because they will physically run different RPMs, okay? So that's the first reason. I need to know what the timing is so I can accurately predict, and that's what you're doing when you time a saw. I need to accurately predict what the saw is gonna do, right? And that's why I don't use a tack a lot, but it's nice to tack a saw here and there so you know what it's doing, like the home lights, <coughs> excuse me. These home lights, I've tacked enough of them, I know about where they run. They're on 10 grand. That's it. Eight, 10 grand wide open, 8 grand in the cut. So I've ported enough of them now that I know approximately where the timing number should be. But here's the problem with these home lights the deck heights are all over the map. So 
They are. They are all over the map. You're talking three to four degrees of timing difference in each saw because the run of them was so long that they changed the deck height. So if I just went in there and said, okay, I measured from the combustion chamber to the top of the exhaust roof and I need to take off 40 thousandths, 50 thousandths, each one of these would have a different exhaust timing. Some would be too high and some would be too low. Okay. So that's the first reason you, in my opinion, and again, I don't want anybody to think if you don't use a timing wheel and you can, and you're getting good results, good for you. I'm not, I'm not somebody that says my way is the only way. Some guys prefer machine work. Some guys do porting like I do, like just raw porting. I do do machine work sometimes though. It's depending on the saw. I'm not one of those people that's going to say your way's wrong. My way's right. My way's right to me and your way's right to you. But in my opinion, you got to use a timing wheel. And the other reason is this saw, this is my personal saw. This is my falling saw. When I'm going to do work, this is my saw. Okay. Um, it's uh, what year is this thing? This is a 2007 365 special. This is a pre X torque saw. Okay. It is still a 65 CC 365. Uh, I went pretty radical on the timing numbers of this saw. Okay. If I wanted to build this saw again, I built this saw years ago. Okay. Super. I mean, this is a, okay. This is a skull saw. I did a lot of work to this saw. I had, I was in this thing three times before I got it where I wanted. And this thing, this thing will run with a ported 372, believe it or not. Took a lot of work and a lot of notes. Now here's the thing. If I wanted to build this saw again, three years ago I built this roughly, two years ago. Starting, okay? I ported this on the channel a year and a half ago maybe, I'm not even sure, okay? I finished the porting and put a timing wheel on it a year and a half ago. Um, if I wanted to recreate this saw, how many saws have I built since then? Two, three, four a month for the last year, say? That's 40 saws, 40, you, you guys get what I'm saying? There's no way I'd be able to remember what the timing numbers are on this. And in fact, I don't remember. Uh, I know approximately where they are, but here's the beauty, guys. Here, I'll just look. Here, here it is right here. Okay, I have the starting timing numbers and all the work I did to it. What the squish is at, what the upper tr transfers are at. I have little notes that I drew of the transfer shapes. Okay, I could build this saw again. So that's why I use a timing wheel, because I have the numbers. And the numbers are all based off of deck height and squish. Right? If, if, if this saw has 20,000 squish, which it does, Okay, and the next one I have will have 25. Well, I can put it on my lathe and take five thousandths off and then make the numbers the same. The saw should run exactly like this one. Okay, so I think I've rambled on about that. I use a timing wheel. I use a timing wheel because I want to recreate my numbers and be able to accurately, I want to put the best saw in my hands and in your hands. And the only way I can do that is if I'm telling you, yeah, this saw will be a hard charger or whatever you want it to do, super fast or super torquey, how can I honestly tell you that if I can't remember the timing numbers of, say, this saw? Um, I could put a wheel back on it, but that would be a lot of wasted time. And, you know, with work and YouTube and all the other things we have, I love it. I love, like, I'm always moving. I'm always emailing you guys. You know, it, it, it's fun. But like, if I have to waste time retiming my saw, that's time that I could be spending answering your guys' questions or editing video or shooting video. So, there you go. I don't think you should port without a timing wheel. That's my professional, personal opinion. Okay, moving forward. Um, how do you know what a saw needs? How do you know? Well, unless you've run the saw, you don't know. Uh, for instance, this saw out of the box is a torque saw. Anybody that's run a 365 special knows they're not super zippy, but they, 
they're hard charging saws stock. They pull hard. They're not super fast. Okay. So you got to run it. I ran the saw stock for a year, I think, before I started doing anything to it. And then I started doing transfer work and taking the base gasket out and I slowly modded it and I knew every level of gains, I wrote it down so that every bit of work I did to this, I could see what did the saw, how did the saw react? Um, this was a good learning saw for me. And uh, so you gotta kinda run the saw. If you've never run the saw, okay, then you're guessing. Here, let's grab another saw here, because we're just, okay, 461. I never ran this saw, never ran it. Uh, I literally got it blown up, rebuilt it, ported it, and ran it like that, okay? Now here's the thing. This saw, I know, is a fast saw out of the box. Uh, I looked at the specs on it. I put the timing wheel on it. The timing wheel, uh, wheel confirmed what I already knew about the saw. Just by the numbers, I knew that this saw had enough RPM, okay? Um, I added RPM to it, but I knew only to add just enough, okay? I didn't want this thing just absolutely screaming because it's 77cc and the chances of this thing living with a long bar and cutting big wood are pretty, pretty good, right? I'm, I'm, a lot of these saws, guys, I am going to sell eventually, so, um, you know, not this one, that's my saw, don't even ask. This one I may sell down the road, I'm still playing with it, but, so, this saw, I want somebody who's making money, cutting big wood, to run a long bar on this saw, and if I raise the exhaust too much, it's probably not going to, you know, it's probably not going to have the goods, so, um, this saw, I didn't even run it. I just ported it, but I knew by the numbers, and you can accurately predict how a saw's gonna run by the numbers, the carb that's on it, and the exhaust, a lot of times. Okay, so, let's talk about this one. We're gonna be working on this saw very, very soon. Poolin, 5200 counter vibe. Um, as far as I know, I've never seen one of these in my province. This is probably one of the only ones that's running. Uh, I bought this saw, got it running. The uh, the AV mounts are broken on it. Okay? That's why I haven't run it, guys. When you put the bar in, it revs up really fast and uh, not super safe with an 85cc saw. This saw, uh, I was actually pleasantly surprised when I put it in one. I was... I was noodling oak with a 24 inch full comp on this saw. This saw, she pulls, but it has a limited carb on it. One of those governed uh, Tillotsons, don't like that. And a choked up muffler. So this saw right away, this saw needs a muffler mod. I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, this saw, let's see if I can show you guys here. I can't right now, I don't want to round these off. Um, if you guys look on Bucket's channel, he just did one of these. And uh, I think he, he did something with the inside. You guys have to go check out that video. But um, this thing's super choked up. So, I don't know what this saw is capable of. I've never seen one ported. I'm going to port this saw. But I got to, so now I've run it. I know approximately the RPM it pulls. This saw has a ton of torque. You could sit on this power head with a long bar and it'll just muscle through. But the saw lacks RPM. So we know, we don't know, but I'm guessing that when I put a timing wheel on the saw, it's going to have a very low exhaust roof. Um, probably not far off a big home light. This saw is probably going to have in the mid 100s, 106, 108, 110 even. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be up there. So, if we want this saw to pull more RPM, we need to raise the exhaust roof, right? But, it's a reed saw, so we got to figure out if the reeds need to be modified. And, and lastly, this carburetor, we're going to have to see, will it deliver enough fuel? These kind of projects are very involved and, and they can be very expensive when you're, when you're spending 100 bucks on a carb. Because let's face it, those aftermarket carbs... 
They're pretty questionable, guys. I remember I ordered a whole whack of aftermarket carbs before I knew any better. The first one I put on, uh, those 200 T's I built, guys. Uh, I ordered like nine aftermarket carbs. The first one I put on was perfect. That carb is still running to this day. I thought, ah, you know, uh, an $18 carburetor or something. The second one I put on ran good for the first day. The second day, the tune would wander. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth carbs, they, none of those worked. So the first one I got was just a fluke. So I'm probably going to have to order a bunch of carbs to do this saw. Um, if I don't have anything in my bin, I could spend $300 to $500 swapping carbs on this saw. So um, these kind of builds are very involved, very technical, and you can't get parts for these. So... Um, Definitely not something for the new porter. If, if if you guys are learning to port, get something that's common in your area, piston ported, and uh, work on that to start with. Uh, port your port your uh, 026s or stuff like that, stuff that you have access to. Okay, I'm gonna grab one more saw and then I think we'll call this good for now. We're gonna do a cutaway video. I'm just gonna grab one more saw. Okay, 550 XP Husqvarna, okay, what do we know about these? These things absolutely rip, okay, they rip. Um, if you've ever run one of these, this is one of the fastest 80cc saws, or 80, <laughs> I'm thinking big saws guys. This is one of the fastest 50cc saws ever. Everybody I know that has one says they rip, but everybody I know that has one says they run too hot and or they blow up. So what, what would we do if we were going to port this? What? How do you look at this? Because this thing already is a ripper. How would you port this? Me? I've been thinking about these. I have several of these guys. I might port one. I'm not sure though. That's why I haven't just dug into it. Um, if I'm going to port one of these, I need to give it more fuel. And I need to do something with the exhaust. I think I think this saw needs a pipe on it. Why? Because the air, there's more area for the air to get out of the cooling fins. And these exhausts ride the case and make the case get hot. And remember, when the case gets hot, the bottom end gets hot. And when the bottom end gets hot, it leans the saw out. This is an auto-tune. It's going to keep dumping fuel in there. And I think that's the problem with these auto-tunes. That bottom end can get infinitely hotter and it'll keep dumping fuel in. But the problem is those bearing races, the plastic ones, don't like to live at that kind of temperature. So this one, we might not raise the exhaust roof at all. We might actually lower it. And how do you lower it? Take the base gasket out or machine the cylinder. But we, we, we need to give it more fuel. So how would we do that? Modifying the transfers. Uh, modifying the intake timing. Does that make sense? Uh, when you modify the intake side, you're taking off the piston or you're taking off the bottom of the intake port. And I'm going to show all this on video, but I just, I wanted to yak with you guys and get you guys ready because when that cutaway video comes out, I'm going to show you guys how it works, what we're doing. Okay. Um, because I haven't ported every saw. And another thing about porting, I live in a cool climate. There are certain saws that I enjoy in the winter that I wouldn't run in the summer because they run too hot. Okay. Um, I run 576s. I run 562s. Those saws run really hot. Even with a muffler mod, I tend to run those in fall, winter, and spring. I don't tend to run those in the summer. Does that make sense? So, um, so yeah. Okay. We're probably going to do, we might give this thing more intake timing, more fuel. More fuel should make it run a little cooler. And a muffler mod and, and do very basic porting to this saw. Okay? So there you guys go. Uh, you guys have been asking me questions. I love it. Keep it up. Email me whenever you guys have a question. Tinmansaws at gmail. Okay? Um, 
all lowercase, all one word, Tin Man's Saws. Email away, guys. I will get to all of them. Uh, I like to be I, I like to be in service to the people, my people. Okay, if you guys need a hand, you just email me. Okay, so that's porting theory in a nutshell. Um, we will get into porting reed saws down the line. Reed saws, guys, are hard to port. Um, I can't stress that enough. Um, I'm getting a lot of emails. Um, you guys are porting home lights, and I don't. I, I think it's great. But the problem is, is that once you put reeds in a saw, the fueling characteristics are totally different. The carburation needs are totally different. It, it's, it's harder to accurately predict what a reed saw is going to do until you run it. And then once you run it, you have to know, do you need a thicker reed, a thinner reed? Like, it's, uh, it's not as much of a science. It's more of an art. And you just got to get a feel for it. So it's hard for me to say... Yeah, you need this or that unless I run the saw or really hear the saw work and I, I it's hard for me to know whether you need reeds or you need a carburetor or you have an air leak or so um, we're gonna have to get further into reeds um, as, as time permits so there you guys go just wanted to talk porting hope it wasn't too long-winded for for you guys but I'm a man of my people, and when you guys ask questions, I want to talk about it. It gets my brain going and go, that's a good question, or how can I make a video of this? How can I show them what I'm thinking about? Because it's impossible for me, it's impossible for me to give timing numbers on every saw. Because again, my numbers are going to be different than your guys's, and I'm telling you that right now. Everybody likes different numbers. And often, two saws will run the same, and I've experienced this. Two saws will run the same that have totally different timing numbers. They'll run very similar. Uh, on video, by feel, you can feel a different porter's saws. Every ported saw I've run, my saws run different than another guy's saws. And I'm going to tell you guys that. It's all in the grinding and the shapes of things and the numbers, the exhaust. It's just all, you know, every porter ports a different saw. Which one's better? I don't know. They're all good. They're all fun. This is just fun, guys. And I'm just having fun. I'm not competitive with anybody. Do I build a good saw? Yeah, I do. Um, but uh, I'm never going to be that guy that says, oh, you can't port or, you know, uh, no. Every it, it, This is just fun. And the more of you guys that port, the more of you guys that are going to teach me something and then I'll get better. That's That's what this is about, guys. This is just fun. Uh, what's more fun than making chainsaws go fast? Making them zippity doo dah, Bill Block. <laughs> Anyhow, I've rambled on enough. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Take her easy.